Welcome to Tasting Wine. I'm Haley. I'm Toth. Today we're tasting wine. We are revisiting Veuve Clicquot because we think the other review of the bottle we did had, like, what was it? The disease or the, the like, the taint from the cork? Yeah, just like a, like a... We thought we had a flawed bottle. Yeah, we're revisiting because we had a, uh, we think we had a flawed bottle based on, like, what a lot of people had said. Yeah. So, we are back again. Because I really want to watch this. This is like the most popular champagne brand in the world. Exactly. Wow, well, we gotta, we gotta, gonna. All right. Founded in 1772. So, I mean, you know. 17. A little bit ago. 1772. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. This one doesn't smell like the last one. Well, the last one didn't, didn't wasn't so expressive. Like yeah, this. I thought that the last one smelled like kind of funky. Yeah, this um, smells like fresh and vibrant, like dried pineapple, maybe some mango. A little um, bit of white flower. White flowers for sure. Underlying toastiness in there. Yeah, so this this label or uh, Berkeley Co. They, the the lady who like took it over at age twenty seven. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. She created like uh, the first champagne vintage. What was it, 1810? 1810. 1810, so champagne vintage did not exist until she came around. Yeah, so she was married to the son of the founder, because this originally was just Clicquot, mm -hmm. and then he died, then the son died, um, so she took it over. Right. So, um, Verve Clicquot actually means the widow Clicquot. Really? Yes. Holy cow. Well, yeah, this, I mean, the smell on this is a lot better than the other one. It's but just really fresh. It's super fresh, it's got really nice bubbles. They're move like it's got yeah it's got it's got really nice stuff going on here, but I'm very anxious. Well, I already did try it, but I'm anxious for you to try it. Yeah, something that I find like actually a little peculiar is like I don't actually really get like a lot of those like traditional champagne smells. No. It's not really like toasty, buttery. I mean, there's like an underlying toastiness, but there isn't. This is more like a uh, I don't know. Say it's more like yeah, you don't get those traditional ones, but it's like trying it. It's more like an aperitif when you try this. Oh really? Yeah, it's just like. You know, it's very powerful in what it is. And it almost has like, it almost smells like, or tastes like this would go really well with like super fresh seafood, like oysters or something like that. Mm. It's not too, I hate to say it's not too terribly interesting for me. I don't know if it needs some time to open up, but it's still a really good, well-balanced, fresh champagne. It's pretty acidic. Like, I'm, I'm salivating a lot. Um, I get like, it tastes like bright. There's some, you know, like lemon. Definitely um, some lemon. Oh yeah. But that's kind of like it. So I think that maybe this should warm up just like a tad. It might need to warm up a tad, but some other things about her, she she invented like two or three major things that didn't exist in Champagne um, that were like widespread, in which was the first vintage. She made the first rosé and she invented like the riddling thing that all the bottles go in, which helps like purify and clarify and like the champagne and those things are like that thing is like uh still to this day like considered traditional methadone method method whatever that's that's still con traditional that, yeah that's still considered like some of the standard practices of that i'm fucking dyslexic I'm, words, right? I'm having a hard fucking time remembering all this stuff i'm here to drink so wine really, at the end of the day i think your message is who runs the world girls well there's so many uh huge champagne brands out there that were either husband and wife teams or solely women uh ended up founding them or taking them over in some way and totally and then elevating them and, and totally transformed them and how they were just like perrier jouet that was a husband and wife team and she was a very big in like getting things out there and stuff like that how's warmed up just a tad, and it is definitely more expressive. I, I put it in the freezer. Yeah. It came out of the wine fridge, it was 55. I put it in the freezer for like 20 minutes. Maybe it got too cold. It was probably like 45. It was really nice and crisp, but I like it. Yeah, it was nice and crisp, but. I might get, so this is probably more like, I would say like, it's probably like 55 degrees right now. It's probably like cellar temp. Yeah, I feel like on the nose, you get some like really cool crushed rocks now. Um, yeah, there's definitely, it's definitely more fruity. Yeah, it's fruitier. There's like grapefruit, and I almost get like a saltiness of some sort. There is kind of like a saltiness on there, huh? Yeah. No, I really like this. This one is so much different than so many of those like 
creamy, toasty, you know, brioche bombs. No, <laughs> I love those. Um, but I, I'm super interested to taste like what their vintage stuff tastes like because I don't know if they're, if they go based off this or if they go based on like, obviously a vintage is going to be different every year, but I, get, I would just be super interested to try it. Mm, the salt is almost like a sea salt bagel. It is. I mean, it's, it's a salty, it's more like it's an like ocean, ocean. It's, it's like more ocean like, salt. yeah, it's more like an oceany salt for me, like a salty brine and like some seaweed or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. But yeah, though, this, this, I, I'd say we got, I think we got a better bottle, uh, but I, I really like this. Mm. I really like it. Yeah, it's definitely more like mango, mm -hmm. um, definitely some like white flowers that I kind of got on the smell earlier. There's white flowers, um, oh yeah. Lemony for sure, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit of like yellow pear. And the finish is like pretty long. Like it, Yeah, it's still, still going. Still tasting it, it's still going. It's still, the bubbles are still holding up after like 20 minutes in the glass here. Yeah. But this is, this is a great, this is a great bottle to have. This is like a, you bring this over, it's so recognizable that it's automatically going to be like, oh, they brought, they brought that. Yeah, you know like, oh, uh, go. I would even say that even if you're going to a place where like people are serious wine lovers, I still think you could bring this and still be like hanging out. Be like, oh, I don't really know much about wine, but I brought this, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm here to learn more, you know. But uh, you ever had Veuve Clicquot? You ever had the... Uh, the Widow Clicquot? The Widow Clicquot, the yellow label? Uh, let us know. But I think it's really good. I'm glad we revisited it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. But make sure you get out there and taste some wine. Let us know what you're trying. Let us know what you're trying next. Uh, make sure you get out there and taste some wine. Yep. I got to say that Thanks twice for now. Thank you for watching. I got a new Instagram, Tasting Wine Official. Oh, you have a new Instagram. We have a new Instagram. We have Instagram. a new Instagram. Yeah. Well, like me as in like I'm on the show, like we, it's, mm. it's like interchangeable. Yeah, you know I understand. What I mean? It's, yeah, you know totally. what I mean. Anywho. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we'll